vaccines today? Innovative techniques now drive vaccine research. Recombinant DNA technology and new delivery techniques are leading the scientists in new directions. Some vaccine research is beginning to focus on non-infectious conditions such as addiction and allergies. Researchers earlier targeted common childhood diseases such as measles, mumps, and rubella. Vaccines for these diseases reduce the disease spread greatly. Pertussis vaccine development took considerably longer time. A whole cell vaccine was first licensed for use in the US in 1948. Viral tissue culture methods developed from 1950 to 1985. That led to the advent of the SOG, an activated, polio vaccine and the SABI, live attenuated oral, polio vaccine. Mass polio immunization around the world has now eradicated the disease from many regions. Routinely recommended vaccines were developed early in the 20th century. These included vaccines that protect against pertussis, 1914, diphtheria, 1926, and tetanus, 1938. These three vaccines were combined in 1948 and given as the DTP vaccine. In the late 1940s, large-scale vaccine production took place and it made it possible to ensure disease control. The vaccine everyone was waiting for was polio vaccine. Parents were scared of the polio epidemics that occurred each summer. They kept their children away from swimming pools and sent them to stay with relatives in the country. People waited for a vaccine, closely following vaccine trials and sending donations to the White House to help the cause. When the polio vaccine was licensed in 1955, the whole country celebrated. Jonas Song, its inventor, became an overnight hero. More vaccines followed in the 1960s, measles, mumps and rubella. In 1963, the measles vaccine was developed. By the late 1960s, vaccines were also available to protect against mumps, 1967, and rubella, 1969. These three vaccines were combined into the MMR vaccine by Dr. Maurice Hilleman in 1971. The 1970s, vaccine success. During the 1970s, one vaccine was even eliminated. Because of successful eradication efforts, the smallpox vaccine was no longer recommended for use after 1972. While vaccine research continued, new vaccines were not introduced during the 1970s. Haemophilus influenza Vaccine development in the 1980s, hepatitis B and Haemophilus influenza type B. The vaccine for Haemophilus influenza type B was licensed in 1985. It was placed on the recommended schedule in 1989. When the schedule was published again in 1994, the Hepatitis B vaccine had been added. The Hepatitis B vaccine was not new, as it had been licensed in 1981. It was recommended for high-risk groups including infants whose mothers were Hepatitis B surface antigen positive. It was also recommended for healthcare workers, intravenous drug users, homosexual men and people with multiple sexual partners. Immunization of these groups didn't effectively stop transmission of hepatitis B virus. That's because about one-third of patients with acute disease were not in identifiable risk groups. The change of recommendation to immunize all infants in 1991 was done. It was due to the failed attempts to control hepatitis B by only immunizing high-risk groups. Then, hepatitis B disease was virtually eliminated in children less than 18 years of age in the United States. Combination of Vaccines In the early 1950s, four vaccines were available, diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis and smallpox. Three of these vaccines were combined into a single shot, DTP. Two-year-old children received five shots but not more than one shot during a single visit. By the mid-1980s, Seven vaccines were available, diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, measles, mumps, rubella and polio. Six of these vaccines were combined into two shots, DTP and MMR, and one, the polio vaccine, was given by mouth. Two-year-old children received five shots and not more than one shot during a single visit. Since the mid-1980s, many vaccines have been added to the schedule. The result is that the vaccine schedule has become more complicated than it once was. Children started receiving far more shots than before. Now, 
children could receive as many as 27 shots by two years of age and up to six shots in a single visit. Earlier DTaP and MMR vaccines were combined. In the same way, new combinations are being made to reduce the number of shots. Adolescents, like adults, were recommended to get tetanus boosters every 10 years. Most people are requiring their first booster dose around age 11. Other than this, most adolescents did not require additional vaccines unless they missed one in childhood. Vaccines for Adolescents By 2005, vaccines specifically recommended for adolescents were only recommended for subgroups. It was based on where they lived or medical conditions that they had. Vaccines for adults provide them increasing opportunities for health. Historically, vaccines were deemed to be only for children. However, vaccines for adults are becoming increasingly common and necessary. Most adults think only of the tetanus booster recommended once in 10 years. Even then, many adults only get the vaccine only if they injure themselves. In 2005, the Tdep vaccine was licensed as an improved version of the typical tetanus booster (TD). The newer version also contains a component to protect against pertussis, whooping cough. All adults, especially those who are going to be around young infants, should get the Tdep vaccine. Adults often unwittingly pass pertussis to young infants for whom the disease can be fatal. In 2012, the CDC recommended that pregnant women get a dose of Tdep. It has to be administered during each pregnancy between 27 and 36 weeks gestation. In 2019, the CDC recommended that Tdap or TD vaccine could be used for booster dosing once in 10 years. Influenza vaccines, available since the 1940s, are now recommended for most adults. Vaccines like MMR and chickenpox are recommended for adults who have not had the diseases. There are vaccines for hepatitis A, hepatitis B, pneumococcus, and meningococcus. They are recommended for subgroups of the adult population. The HPV vaccine became available in 2006. In 2018, the license was expanded to include people up to 45 years of age. The first shingles vaccine, Zostavax, was licensed in 2006. A second shingles vaccine, Shingrix, licensed in 2017. It produces a more robust immune response than Zostavax did. Two doses of this vaccine, separated by two to six months, are recommended for people 50 years and older. In 2019, Zostavax was no longer available. In late 2020, the first COVID-19 vaccines were approved for use in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Most adults were recommended to get this vaccine. Initially due to limited supplies, eligibility groups were made, in order to protect those most at risk first. Now these vaccines are being administered to children too. Unlike childhood vaccines, adult vaccines are typically not mandated.